Hi guys and welcome back to the Cubase Beginners course. We're now going to record a guitar because up until now we've only recorded sounds that are within Cubase such as the drums and a piano. So this is electroacoustic and we're going to record this guitar using these connections on the side. So see you then. So just before we record the guitar, I've just noticed that our output signal or our master bus signal has got a red light on it, which means at some point in the last few lessons it has peaked and we don't want to go above zero, uh, digital zero, that's very, very bad. So all we've got to do is come into the mixer and if you want the full mixer window, press F3 and we will be going in more in depth into this mixer definitely in the last lesson. But all we've got to do is just highlight both the tracks, so hold down so click one of them, hold down shift and click the other one, press quick link which will temporarily link them together and we're just going to bring down the volumes. Let's have a little play and just keep an eye on our master fader here. And that's okay, we're on about minus six there. Maybe a touch more because every time you add an instrument obviously it sums together and the overall output starts going up and up and up. So just something to um, keep in mind there. So click quick link and take it off and we'll go back to adding this guitar. So the first thing we need to do is have a look at our inputs. So press F4 and you can see our audio connections inputs here. Just make sure you're not on the outputs tab, make sure you're on inputs. Now you can see we have some already set up. I'm just going to delete these. You may have a stereo bus here. I think stereo bus is default. So what I'm going to do is just actually delete these and start from scratch. You may want to do the same because um, if we're recording guitar, obviously that's just one microphone, therefore it's a mono signal. So it might be better to delete your stereo bus and add a mono bus, which is what I'm going to do now. So add bus, make sure it's mono and I'm going to call it input one. Just keep this naming convention really, really simple. Now I've got two inputs on my sound card and the second one has a high Z, high impedance for guitars. So I'm going to add another bus, input to, I'm even going to call it high Z just to keep this really clear. Now if I was using my normal sound card it would say Steinberg input one which is fine and also on here it would say Steinberg input two but that's fine as it is. So now I know which one is which. So that's the input setup. What we need to do is add an audio track, a mono audio track. So we go to plus, go to audio this time, and I'm gonna to go to input two, because I want the guitar input, the high Z, and mono, go into the stereo out, and I'm gonna call it guitar. Add track, and as you can see in the inspector, the input is the input two, and the output is stereo out. You can always change these here if you want to. So that's the input sorted out. The next thing we need to do is plug our guitar in. So obviously plug in from your guitar into input two, as shown here, and then just turning up the input two gain until it peaks. Okay, so just to confirm that the input one is the microphone I'm using to record this tutorial, and input two is guitar because it's high Z. Now obviously have a, have a play through and just make sure that you don't peak. And you can also use the inbuilt tuner as well. So come over to inserts on your guitar track and come to tools and tuner. Okay, now that you've tuned your guitar, the next thing you may want to consider doing is to add some effects to it. Uh, we can do this still by recording it dry. So come to distortion and maybe amp simulator. That's available in this version of Cubase. And make sure you've got monitor down so you can hear the actual effect. And you can always change this effect after the recording because it's actually recording it dry. And obviously you can choose any one of these many, many presets. So let's just try more of a bluesy, maybe a phasey type thing might work well. Let me 
maybe Jazzy Clean. Okay, so anyway, that's obviously entirely up to you. So just make sure monitor's down and record enable is down. Next thing I want to do is set up a loop. Well, I've already got loop up here, but just make sure your nine bar or whatever it is, however long your recording piece is going to be, just make sure that's on loop. Because with loop record, you can go round and round and round doing many, many takes, and then I'll show you how to, how to take the best parts of each take. So you've got one really, really good take. So I'm just going to record this in now. So you've got a choice of using the metronome or you can obviously use your backing track. It's up to you. I think I'll use the metronome, that's fine. So I'm going to make sure I'm back to the start and hit record and I should get a two bar counting. Okay, so and to hear back your recording, just deselect the monitor button. And so basically we have five takes here, all layered on top of each other. And the last take, I just stopped a bit short. And you can flip between the, the takes by hitting this bottom arrow here. And so you can just quickly go to take one, or take two, whatever, you know. And also another thing you can do is just chop them all up. So let's chop these up into two bar sections and I can just choose the best ones from each one and some of these aren't very good so I think they got slightly better as the takes went on so if you want to check audition take four just do that so take two wasn't very good take three on the second part. So I'm gonna go through and choose the best takes. You can also increase the volume on each individual part if you want to, just by using the top middle handle like that. Or if the second part, let's say, was slightly lower volume, you could just snip it there, go back to your original. Oh, I always right click and choose object selection and then you can just increase the volume of that second bit there. You can vary the timing slightly. You can come in here and obviously move these around with or without snap, as you already know. And you can chop bits out. You know, if there's a bit of dead silence, which we'll be doing more in the vocals, actually, you can chop bits out. I'll show you that in the vocal lesson. You can also go into your amp simulator and change the setting afterwards as I said to you or you can just bypass it and have nothing at all entirely up to you you can also fade in and fade out again this is probably more going to be better used on vocals but you can fade in fade out by using these handles here Always good for getting rid of clicks and pops. And if you are gonna chop anything in the middle of an audio like that, you wanna make sure you've got this button pressed, snap to zero crossing. And basically every time a waveform goes over the zero point, that's where you want to snip it because then you won't get any clicks or pops. So just make sure that's on as well. And Cubase will automatically find those points for you and bearing in mind your going at 44,000 times a second, there's a lot of them. But it's so much easier if Cubase just finds them for you. So that's another great little tip, make sure that button's down there. So basically I'm going to choose my best takes. I'm also going to record it in a bass guitar in exactly the same way, so I don't need to show you that. And in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you how to record a vocal. So hope this is useful so far, guys. I'm Jay from bornproduce.com and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.